So we have that the function f of n is defined at the power series by the power series f of x, that's the power series, and then there's the general term next uh, here for all the real numbers x for which the series converges. So for part a, we're asked to use the ratio test. So we just have to know how the ratio test works and to find the integral convergence of the power series for f. So I'm going to set this up. So pretty much it's the limit as n goes to infinity of a over the n plus 1 over a to the n, which our a to the n is our term that we already have on the top. So what we're going to do is we're going to plug n plus 1 into this. So after I plug uh, the values into the equation right here, which I took the immediately effect of turning the division sign into multiplication. You can skip that in the test, there is no problem. Now I'm going to try to find terms and simplify them. So my first thought is we have the negative 1 and plus 1 and the negative 1n. When we, simplif when we simplify those two, we can see that the top part has a plus 1, meaning that we have one more term of a negative 1. This means that the uh, first part of this, this, that thing cancels to negative 1 to the 1, which is just negative 1. And since we're inside an absolute value, the negative 1 is going to be positive, so that transforms into a 1. So we already have the first part. The second part is trying to find another relationship. Now, what I found, what I found here, and you can do it later on, is that since we have the x terms and the n terms, I immediately know that we have 2n plus 1 and 2n plus 3. So we're going to separate what we have into two different equations. I separate the 2n the n terms on one side and the n terms on the other one. And when you see the 2n plus 1 or 2n plus 3, we, we take the, two, the leading terms, which are the 2n's, because the 1 and the 3, at the end of the day, are not going to affect the change as n goes to infinity at all, like super this, uh, small change. So and 2n over 2n is 1, which means that this whole thing, this whole limit approaches 1, which means we're, we are only left remaining with a 2n plus 3 over x to the 2n plus 1. And when you simplify that, we get that the, that the limit as n goes to infinity of x to the 2n plus 3 over 2n minus 1, so we subtract each term from the other, and we just end up getting the absolute value of x squared in the interval convergence of 1. Now, we immediately know square value, which means if it's negative, it's going to turn to positive, and it's always going to be positive either way, because it's a square value. So, we immediately know that this will be, so we have those two, negative 1 and 1 as our uh, intervals, right? So, now we got to try them to see if we include the 1 and the negative 1. So, we do this, I'm going to set this up. So how do you plug these x values? Well, you just plug them into our ge geometric, uh, our general term, sorry, which you have on top. And when we plug when x equals 1 to that term, we get that negative 1 to the n over 2n plus 1, and that converges by the alternating series test. And for x equals negative 1, we get negative 1 to the 3n plus 1 over 2n plus 1, which also converges by the alternating series test, which means that our interval converges at the end, and sub being is negative 1 including the negative 1, x to 1 including the 1. And that's how you finish part A. Now for part B, we're asked to show that the absolute value of f in the 1 second minus 1, 1 second, sorry, 1 half, minus 1 half, the absolute value of that will be smaller than 1 tenth. We can show this really easy because we know that a, our value x equals uh, 1 over half, the series for f of x is going to be an alternating series which uh, which has the terms that is decreasing in each time. We know that each time this is minus plus, but at the end of the day, since it's alternating, it will approach zero, zero because we proved that by the alternating series test before. So now we have to, we can approx uh, f of one half with one half and use uh, by using the only the first term of the series, which in this term, in this case, sorry, will be x3 minus uh, three because this first one is x3 is the zero term, right? So by doing this, we get, so when I plug one half into our, uh, into our power series, we get f of one half here on the top equals one half minus, and we're going to stop there at the second term, minus one half uh, cubed over three. And we can just put the one half on the other side, which leaves us with f one half minus one half, which is what we're trying to prove. And for, to find that, we just find the next proximate term, which is one have screw, uh, cubed, sorry, over 3. When we get that, we get 1, 8 over 3. We multiply 3 
times 8 and we get 124 over 24 which is smaller than 1 times over 10 so using the magnitude of the first term this shows that the error bound is correct I mean that we proved this statement now for part C we're just asked to uh, write the first four non-zero terms and the general term for an infinite series that represent a prime of x what we're writing off of x is literally our top part let me erase some of this it's literally this this is f of x so to find a prime of x we just take the derivative of each term including the general the general term which we can also find by just seeing our equation of f prime by doing this f prime of x we get the derivative of x is one the derivative um, the minus plus x will remain the same uh for now yeah because none of the terms will turn into negative um of x cubed over three we bring out the three we get three over three x squared which is just x squared the same with the next term we bring five down they will cancel with the five which is divided by leaving x4 to the fourth power same with the next one which leaves me with x to the six we have plus we put we put the plus sign and we add the three dots then we're going plus sign to add our general term which we know it's alternating right so we know it's negative one to the n that's that part and we just gotta find x times which value gives me the exponents here and when i plug zero x times two to the zero is uh just one when we plug uh one we get x to the two times one which is two which works perfectly fine with my power series and therefore that's a really simple way they give us in the epic exam to uh, find question number c was a pretty much an easy question i would call it question that you should know and from part d which also relates to part b uh sorry part c is use the result from part c to find out our value of f prime of one six so when i started the test i immediately noticed this this uh is a geometric series right we immediately know that so since this is a geometric series we just gotta find how much does it jump per each power series well it's inter uh it's uh interchanging from negative to positive it's alternating so we know there's gonna be a negative sign uh which and then we gotta find why it multiplies it so one to negative to x squared we literally have to multiply times x squared and we can conf confirm this by the next term x squared again gives me x fourth with a negative negative which means that each term is jumping negative x squared term so when we plug this into our geometric equation one minus negative don't forget the negative x squared into our just um, simple equation we really just get that f prime of x will end up being one over one plus x squared right if we just plug now the one six that we're giving in the question f prime of one six into this equation we get one over one plus one six squared just the one six right which ends up getting us one over one plus one over 36 which if you add one plus one and 36 we just know that you just add 136 to the one which is 36 36 37 which ends up being our final answer to this question and we've completed the first the sixth question in just under nine minutes.